This video is sponsored by Brilliant. In this video, we're going to see some common Python beginner mistakes that you should avoid when working with data. Some of them I used to make myself as a data analyst, while I discover others when reading other people's code. Alright, let's get started. Alright, the first mistake we usually make when working with data frames is creating a function to modify the values in a column of a pandas data frame. Let's say we have the following data frame. This is the df data frame. Now, for some reason, if we want to add the letter A to the values in the column 0, so this column, a common approach will be defining a function that does this task and then using the apply function to modify the values of the column, in this case, the, the zero column, the first one. So as you can see here, this isn't complicated, but creating functions for every change we need to make in a data frame is not practical. This is when Lambda comes in handy. The Lambda function is similar to the regular Python function, but it can be defined without a name which makes it a nice looking one-liner. All this code I wrote can be reduced to this single line of code. Now, if I print this data frame after using the lambda function, you can see that this letter A was added to the values in the column zero. All right, and now another common beginner mistake that we make when we learn Python for data analysis is using the plus operator for string concatenation. The most common way to concatenate strings in Python is using the plus operator. However, a big issue with this operator is that the syntax is not so clean and also we cannot go beyond joining strings. For example, here, if you want to create this sentence, Python was created by Gideon Rusen and released in 1991, you will have to convert this year variable, which is an integer, into a string to build this sentence. In contrast, f strings work in a different way. They use curly braces to store a value that will be formatted into a string. If we rewrite this into an f string, we'll get this. So now the syntax is cleaner. We can see Python was created by, then the name, and released in and then the year. And we don't have to use that str function to turn this integer into a string, but this is done automatically. Another advantage of the f string is that you can customize how the string is going to be printed. For example, here I have this variable that says GPA equal to 3.355. And here, if I want to print his GPA is, and then use only the first decimal of this value, I can use this 0.1f which indicates that I want to round this to the first decimal. And also you can do other things like using special functions inside the f string. For example, here I'm going to use the daytime function to print today's date. So here I import daytime and now I use the percentage %b, percentage %d and percentage %y to get the year, the month and the day of today's date. So here you can see if I print this, I'm going to get today's date. So today is April 9th. 2024. And now a common mistake we have when we work with multiple lists is that we want to loop through this multiple list using the enumerate function. This is fine when you have two lists. For example, here I have two lists and I can print this message without any problem. A better way to do this is using the zip function. The zip function takes iterables, aggregates them in a tuple and returns it. Let's see how we can print a similar message, but now with three lists. Now here I can loop through the three lists and build this message that you can see here. Barcelona is the city of Spain and the capital is Madrid and the other two sentences as well. And I could do this using the zip function. And this would have been more complex if I had used that enumerate function. All right, another common mistake we use when working with data is not using list comprehensions. For example, here I have a list that I named words, and this has the states of the USA, so California, Florida, and Texas. And if I want to capitalize this, sometimes what we usually do is creating an empty list and then using a for loop to modify every value of the list and then append this to the empty list. So here, if I print this, we get the job done and as you can see here, the values of the words list are capitalized. There is nothing wrong with doing this, but something much better to do is using list comprehensions. And I'm going to show you how this works. And what we do here is creating a list. And inside this list, we do the for loop. So here you can see for word in words 
And then on the left, you see the action that we want to make in the elements of the word slate. In this case, word that title. So we want to capitalize every element of the word list. So now if I print this, this capitalized list, now I'm going to get the same result, but now using list comprehensions. And this is sometimes more practical than doing all of this. All right, another common mistake we often do when working with file objects as a data analyst is not using the with statement. So for example, here I'm reading a file using the open function. And what we usually forget to do is use the close that I wrote before and I just delete it. And well, that's easy to remember, but sometimes after writing code for hours, we might forget to close the F file. And this is when the with statement comes in handy. The with statement will close the file object automatically. And here is how it works. You only have to use with then the, the function, the open function here, and you have to read it as F. And then you do the action below. And well, in this case, I want to write new data. And that's how you do here. You don't have to write the F that close that we tend to forget, but only use that with statement. And I use this with statement very often when I pickle objects, as you can see here, because I don't have to close the file manually, as I showed you before. All right, we often make the next mistake when collecting data for our data analysis project. Say we're scraping a website. So here I'm importing web driver from Selenium, and then I'm trying to find an element using the driver. And here, a common bad practice we make is using the try except, but only using a bare except. The problem with a bare except is that it will catch system exit and keyboard interrupt exceptions. And also when you read the script, it's not completely understandable what exception you want to catch here. So it's a better practice to specify the exception in the accept clause. And if you're using Selenium, you only have to import the exception. For example, here, no such element exception and element click intercepted exception. And then you have to add them to the accept block. So here you can add multiple accept blocks for each exception, and this is more readable and you will avoid the problems that I explained before. Here's another mistake that we often make, and this is overusing the for loop. Often we forget that there are packages that can make our life easier. One of those packages you should use as a data analyst is NumPy. NumPy could help you solve math operations faster than for loops. Say we have an array of random scores and we want to get the average score of those who failed the exam. So I score less than 70. Let's try to solve this with a for loop. If you try to solve this with a for loop, you will have to create these two variables and then use this for with this if condition. So here you sum the scores of those who failed the exam and divide it by the number of people that failed the exam and you get the answer of this problem. But you can simplify all of this for loop using NumPy. So instead of doing all of this, you can simply use NumPy vector operations to filter those scores that are less than 70 and then to calculate the mean. And that's how you get to the same answer using NumPy. And another reason to use NumPy is that it's way faster than doing a for loop. Another mistake that we make when we're beginners is not using the keys and values methods properly when working with dictionaries. And in case you don't know the difference between keys and values in a dictionary, here those in green are keys and those in blue are values. And the problem here is that we sometimes don't use them properly. So you want to loop through the dictionary and obtain the keys. You might use the keys method as I'm doing here in this first example, but did you know that you could obtain the keys just by looping through the dictionary as I showed you in the second example? If I run this, you will see that I will get the same result in both examples. Also, we might come up with workarounds to get values for dictionary, as I showed you in this new example, but that could be easily obtained with the items method. So don't forget to use the items function to easily obtain the keys and values of a dictionary. All right, before I continue with these common beginner mistakes, remember that there are many other mistakes not included in this list. If you want to avoid them all, what I recommend you is to learn to think like a programmer. And that's something today's sponsor, Brilliant.org, can help you with. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant is a learning platform that helps you build understanding from the ground up. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, which is proven to be more effective than just watching videos. Brilliant has a section dedicated to Python. It will teach you key code concepts such as loops, variables, nesting, and conditionals, allow you to start building programs on day one with a built-in drag-and-drop editor, and most importantly, develop your mind to think like a programmer, which is better than just memorizing programming concepts. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash thepycoach 
or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and now let's go back to the video. Another common mistake we make when we work with data is using the combination range and length functions to obtain the elements of two lists. For example, here I want to build this sentence using the elements of the country and population list. So I do a for loop and I use this range and length combo. And that's how I get these three sentences. But a simple way to do this is using the numerate function. This replaces the combination of range and length and you will get the same result. And if you want to go to the next level, you can use the zip function. The zip function will help you iterate through multiple lists and you will get the same result. And finally, a mistake we should never make is importing everything. When we're beginners or when we feel lazy, it's tempting to import everything from a module using the import asterisk. This isn't a good practice because this can be inefficient and it can cause conflict between variable names. Remember that when you use these asterisks, you don't know which objects you're importing as well as their names. So instead of importing everything from the module, what you can do is either import the specific object you plan to use or the whole module. In that way, you will avoid different problems in the future. And that's it for this video. Let me know in the comment section what other beginner mistakes you have made as a data analyst or that you know other beginner data analysts have made. And I'll see you on the next video.